owns every single one of my high net worth clients and friends owns property in the United States. And unfortunately, most of them acquired it individually. Why did these smart people do that? Owning US real estate individually is almost the worst way you can possibly own it. Some let their desires get the best of them, some didn't want to miss out on opportunities, and others just didn't think about getting advice. The reasons vary, but one thing is certain. You should get advice before investing in anything, especially if that thing is in another country. Restructuring real estate already owned can be complex and expensive. That's why I created this video, to help people investing in US real estate avoid the mistakes of individual ownership and the mistakes so many people have made by understanding what the best structures are for foreigners to invest in US real estate. Let's get started. But before we get into the best structures to invest in US real estate with, let's talk about the single worst structure for investing in US real estate and that is individual ownership. Unfortunately, it's also the most common way that foreigners invest in US real estate. And they mainly do it because it's simple, it's cheap, and there's nothing to set up. You don't even need advice. You just file, find a realtor, buy real estate. Sounds like a great idea, right? Not so much. So the advantages of individual ownership are, as I said, it's simple, it's cost effective because there's nothing to set up. There's no corporate formalities or complex administrative requirements, like having board meetings and compiling meeting minutes, passing resolutions. Like I said, there's no setup. You don't have to file any separate tax return. You just report any income or expenses related to your US real estate on your tax return. There's no entity level tax, and you get the advantage of the reduced long-term capital gains tax rate of 20% when you sell it, assuming you've held it for over a year. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, subscribe to our email list and follow me on LinkedIn. Links below. The disadvantage of individual ownership are non-resident aliens are gonna be required to file a US income tax return. That means they are one, need to get a US tax ID number and interact directly with the IRS as themselves, which I don't generally recommend. It's not a pleasant experience and why subject yourself to the IRS if you could use some type of entity to do that on your behalf. Also, gift tax. So if a non-resident alien individual owns US real estate themselves and they wanna gift it or part of it to a spouse or a child or whoever, there's gonna be gift tax of up to 40%. Also, there's a state tax. This is something a lot of foreigners are not aware of when they invest in the United States. If you die owning US real estate, the value of that real estate, other than $60,000, is gonna be taxed at the US estate tax rates of up to 40%. That can eat up almost half of the value of your investment. Also, you don't get any privacy because you're investing in your own name and you have unlimited liability. So let's say, for example, you invested in a rental property and the tenant sues you. Guess what? All your personal assets worldwide are at risk because you don't have any limited liability protection like you would have gotten like investing through some type of company or a trust. You have no separation of ownership and management, right? Like with a company, the owners can appoint directors or managers to manage it and the owners don't need to do anything. That's not the case here. You're going to have to manage it yourself. And also there's no probate protection. So if you die owning the property, in addition to having the expense of estate tax, you're going to have to open probate with a court and go through the lengthy probate process to get that property retitled in the name of your heirs. And that means the property might not go to the heirs that you want because it's gonna pass according to the US into state laws. You're gonna to have to pay for the probate process, which, or your estate will have to pay for the probate process, which can often be 10 or 12% of the value of the estate. And it takes a long time to get through it. I mean, oftentimes more than a year. So I think the disadvantages of individual ownership far outweigh the advantages, which is why I almost never, ever recommend individual ownership. The only time I ever really recommend individual ownership is if you don't have any heirs and you really don't care what happens with your assets when you die, then go for it. But otherwise, I don't think it's a good idea. One of the best ways to invest in US real estate, in, in my opinion, is through a foreign corporation. First, you get gift and estate tax protection if you're gifting the foreign corporation that owns the property. So let's say, for example, you have a company set up here in Dubai and you use that to acquire property in the United States. So now you don't actually own the property in the United States, you own property in the foreign corporation. 
And those shares in the foreign corporation are not considered U.S. property for U.S. gift and estate tax purposes, which means you can gift those shares to whoever you want. So instead of gifting part of the property, let's say to your wife or your kids, you just gift shares in the foreign company, no U.S. gift tax. Also, if you die owning those shares of the foreign corporation, no U.S. estate tax because they're not U.S. property. They can be bequeathed to your heirs without any U.S. estate tax. Also, the foreign corporation, as I just said, can be transferred tax-free for gift and estate tax purposes. And also to a business entity. If you wanted to transfer the shares of the foreign corporation to some type of a trust or a holding company or something like that, you could do that free of any U.S. transfer tax. You also have privacy protection because you're not investing directly in your name. You get asset protection because the foreign company is going to offer you limited liability. You get the low corporate income tax rate in the United States of 21% on profits. And that's really nice because that's going to be on your ongoing profits, which can be less than the top personal income tax rate, which is 37%, and very close to that long-term capital gains tax rate of 20%. So if the company sells it, you're really only paying 1% more tax than you would individually, and you have the ability to separate ownership and management. So the shareholders can elect directors to manage the foreign corporation who can manage the business, and the shareholders can stay out of it if they want to. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of investing through a foreign corporation. So the first one is FERPTA. FERPTA stands for the Foreign Investment in Real Property Tax Act of 1980. And what happened before FERPTA is foreigners were just selling their property, keeping the profits, leaving, not paying the U.S. tax. So the U.S. implemented FERPTA so that the buyers of U.S. real estate from foreign sellers need to withhold 15% of the sale price and pay that to the IRS as a withholding tax to guarantee payment of tax from the foreign seller. So this way, 15% of the gross proceeds from any sort of disposition of U.S. real estate, most commonly it's gonna be a sale, is paid to the IRS. So as a quick example of FERPTA, let's say for example, a foreign seller sells a property for $500,000. The buyer would need to withhold 15% FERPTA withholding tax and pay it to the IRS. So 15% of $500,000, $75,000. So $75,000 goes to the IRS to guarantee tax on any potential gain. $425,000 goes to the seller. Now the seller would then file a US income tax return reporting the sale. And if that $75,000 that was withheld is an overpayment of what the actual tax was, then that foreign seller will receive a refund. If it was an underpayment, then they would owe additional tax. So you don't get any FERPTA protection from a foreign corporation because FERPTA only applies to foreign sellers. If you were a US corporation, for example, you would avoid FERPTA. So disadvantages, top first and foremost of a foreign corporation is no FERPTA protection. It must file a separate tax return, Form 1120, in the United States to report any income related to the U.S. property. There's an entity-level corporate income tax, as I said, of 21%, but there's also what's called a branch profits tax, which is a 30% additional tax on top of the 21% corporate income tax that foreign corporations are liable for. That may sound like a lot, and it is, because it would give you a total tax bill of 51% plus any state taxes that would be owed, but it is often reduced, oftentimes down to zero by an applicable tax treaty. So for example, investing through a Dubai company on a US rental property is probably not gonna be a great idea because there's no tax treaty, you're gonna wind up paying that full 51% of tax. But if you invest through, let's say an EU country, or through a, a company established in an EU country that has a tax treaty with the US, it's possible that that branch profit tax gets reduced all the way down to zero, but in any event, less than 30%. So you do have to watch out for the branch profits tax. That is a disadvantage of investing through a foreign corporation. Also, if you wanna use the property personally, you need to pay rent for your use of that property. Otherwise, you risk the IRS imputing rent to the foreign corporation including interest and penalties, something you don't want to do. So if you're planning on using the property personally and you're not willing to pay fair market rent for the use of property, then the foreign corporation is probably not a great structure for you. And it also doesn't own any, it doesn't give you any probate protection. So, you know, the foreign shares are going to pass however you have that structured, either according to the laws of the country where you're resident or according to the trust that it's in or your will or, or whatever. So in closing, a foreign corporation is a great option if you live in a country that has a tax treaty with the United States. 
Investing through a foreign corporation is usually my favored structure if you live in a country with a tax treaty with the United States. If not, it's probably not going to be as advantageous and we would want to look at a structure more like this next one, which is a U.S. corporation owned by a foreign corporation. So this offers many of the same advantages as a foreign corporation. You get the gift and estate tax protection because if you remember, you have a U.S. company that owns the real estate. The foreign company owns 100% of the shares of the U.S. company, and all you own is shares in the foreign corporation. So you can gift those or bequeath those to your heirs completely free of any U.S. estate tax, but you also get FERPTA protection. So there's no FERPTA withholding tax because the seller, in this case the U.S. company, is a U.S. person, so FERPTA wouldn't apply. The foreign corporation could be transferred tax-free, so if you want to transfer the shares of the foreign corporation that owns the U.S. corporation into a trust or another company or something like that, you can do so completely free of U.S. tax. You get privacy protection, you get asset protection because of limited liability, you get the 21% corporate tax rate in the United States without any branch profits tax because it's a U.S. corporation, not a foreign corporation that is earning the income and you have the separation of ownership and management. The disadvantages of investing through this structure is that dividends paid by the U.S. corporation to the foreign corporation are going to be subject to withholding tax. Now, withholding tax typically in the United States by default is 30%, but again, that's often reduced by an applicable tax treaty and generally it's reduced to zero if the foreign owner of the U.S. corporation is a foreign corporation. This is a fantastic structure if your company is set up and qualifies for treaty benefits in a country that has a treaty with the United States that reduces that withholding tax rate. If not, the structure is a little bit less favorable, but there's other ways to structure it that it is more favorable, but you have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. Again, the U.S. company is going to be required to file a separate tax return. There's the entity level corporate income tax. Again, it's pretty low of 21%. If you want to use the property personally, again, you're going to have to pay fair market rent or risk the rent being imputed and interest and penalties that go along with that. And you don't have any probate protection if the shares in the foreign corporation aren't in some sort of a trust or foundation or some other beneficial structure like that. Now, the next structure we're going to talk about is investing through a non-grantor trust. And to be honest with you, this is probably my favorite structure, especially if you plan on using the property personally. So you get gift tax protection, you get estate tax protection, you get privacy protection, asset protection, you get the advantage of long-term capital gains as long as the gains, so let's say the trust sells the property and then the trust distributes all of that gain to its beneficiaries, then the beneficiaries pay tax on that gain, but they get the advantage of the long-term capital gains tax rate. You also, you can use the property without having to pay fair market rent. You have the separation of ownership and management because it's managed by the trustee, but the beneficiaries are the ones entitled to the benefit, and you get probate protection because that's built into a trust. The disadvantages are that you don't get any FERPTA protection, but that's not such a big deal because if you overpay the tax, you can get a refund. You, the trust will be required to file a separate tax return. If you don't distribute all of the trust's income, you have compressed tax rates. So trusts are liable for U.S. tax at up to 37% on undistributed income, but you reach that at a very compressed level. I, I forget exactly what the number is, but I, it's under $20,000 and you're already paying 37% tax. So if you're using a non-grantor trust to invest in U.S. real estate that's generating income, it's always best to distribute that income, let the beneficiaries pay the tax on that. It's going to be much cheaper. There is going to be 30% withholding tax on distribution, so the trust itself is going to be required to withhold on distributions to the beneficiaries and pay that over to the IRS to guarantee tax. If the 30% is more than the actual tax due, they will get refunds. Another downside is that the non-resident beneficiaries will be required to file U.S. income tax returns and interact with the IRS and get TINs. I think that this structure oftentimes warrants it due to all of its benefits. You do have administrative complexities. I mean, operating a trust is, is, is complex. You need to document it properly and have proper meetings and minutes and resolutions, things of that nature. And this last one, unfortunately, is a mistake. You do have probate protection. Should not say no probate protection. That was a mistake, my apology. Now let's talk about owning US real estate through LLCs. For more information on how LLCs are taxed, 
please check out my video, How Are LLCs Taxed? I'm just gonna go over it really briefly here. US LLCs that have one owner are considered disregarded entities, meaning they don't file tax returns at all. They're disregarded for tax purposes. The LLC's owner is liable for reporting and paying tax on any of the LLC's income. LLC with more than one owner by default is treated as a partnership. The partnership is required to file a separate tax return, but the partnership itself does not pay any U.S. income tax. Rather, the income flows through to the partners in the partnership who report and pay tax on that income. It can also elect to be treated as a U.S. corporation, in which case the U.S. corporation tax will apply, meaning it is subject to corporate income tax at a level of 21% and the shareholders will be liable for tax on dividends paid by the LLC to the shareholders. I don't generally recommend using an LLC to own US real estate if you are a non-resident alien. The reason being is it's not gonna give you any gift tax protection or estate tax protection. The LLC is good when used in conjunction with another entity. So let's say, for example, we're using that dual tiered structure where we have a foreign corporation owning a US corporation and that US corporation is going to invest in multiple properties. So if that US corporation owns four properties and liability arises as to one of those properties, by that US corporation owning the four properties is going to get sued and all of those properties are at risk because they're all owned by the US corporation. What we could do is silo the risk using LLCs. So that US corporation sets up four LLCs. They're gonna be disregarded entities for US tax purposes. They're not gonna to have to file any separate tax returns. The US corporation is gonna report all the income and loss related to those properties from those LLCs. So from a tax perspective, it's no different than that US corporation owning those four properties directly. The difference is now we have each one of those properties in a separate LLC under the US corporation. And because each one of those has limited liability, the liability is going to be limited to the assets in that LLC. So in this case, if there's liability as to one of those LLCs, the person suing is going to sue the LLC and only that LLC's assets are at risk. The corporation's assets, which are the other three LLCs, are going to be completely protected. So that's where I think LLCs make a big difference and are, are very useful for non-resident aliens owning U.S. real estate. But like I said, I don't generally recommend it for a non-resident alien to set up a U.S. LLC and then go ahead and, and purchase U.S. property. You're not getting any firm to protection, no estate tax protection, no gift tax protection. So you want to use it in conjunction with another entity or structure. So I know a lot of you are thinking now, well, what if I already own U.S. real estate? What can I do? Am I stuck? Can I restructure it? The answer is maybe. If you live in a country with a tax treaty, there are great solutions. If you don't live in a country with a tax treaty, there are still solutions, but oftentimes they're less beneficial and more costly. So some of the things we need to be aware of when we're restructuring U.S. real estate that is already owned by a non-resident alien individual is that if you transfer that to a business entity, oftentimes that's going to trigger a capital gain on which you're going to have to pay tax on any appreciation. There could also be FERPTA withholding on the transfer because the transfer to a business entity is considered a disposition. There are certain exceptions to this, but that generally is the case. You could also have a gift tax in the case you're gifting it into a trust, for example. Like I said before, there are options to avoid all of the above in many cases, not all cases. It depends on many circumstances of what country you're a citizen, of what country you're a resident, what your tax situation looks like. So we have to evaluate it on a case by case basis, determine the tax consequences of restructuring it and then decide whether or not it's a good idea. So we've been helping high net worth individuals structure and restructure their U.S. real estate investments for two decades. We're experts at implementing the right structure for our clients' unique situation. If you need help, give us a call or shoot us an email. We're here to help. You can contact us by emailing us at info at esquiregroup.com or on the web at www.esquiregroup.com. Thank you.